composers Kava Cohen and Michael Nielsen, who have recently finished their score to Forza Motors- Motorsport 6, the latest entry in the hit racing game series. The duo have joined together in the past on such scores as Splinter Cell Conviction, Generation P, Battleship, and Splinter Cell Blacklist. Uh, apart from working on their separate solo careers as composers, uh, they're all the, the founders of Full Tilt, uh, now known as Ninja Tracks. And Ninja Tracks has become one of the leading production music libraries in the industry. Guys, thank you so much for your time and talking today. Thank you, Kaya. Nice to talk to you. Yeah, thanks for having us on board. So I guess before we start, uh, I guess just uh, maybe introduce your names uh, so the, the viewers at home know which voice is which person. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is Michael Nielsen. And I'm Kave Cohen. Cool. So no, I'm the more masculine voice. You just like <laughs> you can pick up on that right away. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, not, not true. Mine, mine's up high, up high up here. <laughs> yeah, I'm the nasally one, I guess. Then. <laughs> uh, to to start off though, um, I would I'd love to um know your guys' path to to film scoring. You know what what was that initial spark in your lives that kind of set you on this path to film, game, and TV composing. And when at that point did your guys' paths cross together to kind of form this partnership? Um, so for me, it was it was pretty early on. Um, I had, uh, you know, started with like the typical piano lessons and, um, you know, uh, and, and just uh, started getting into music at a pretty young age. And I quickly discovered that I was you know, able to compose. I was writing my own little tunes on the piano and this and that. Um, so during that time period, I think I was probably, you know, six, seven, eight years old, something like that. Uh, that's right around the time that ET had come out. And, um, I was just absolutely floored by the score, John Williams score, uh, to that movie. And it was actually the very first piece of music that I asked my parents to buy me. So they bought me the theme from E.T. on this seven-inch vinyl, which I actually still have. It's right here in the studio. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> and I was just, you know, bowled over by by the music and obviously by the film as well. Um, and I would just, you know, I would sit on the floor in front of the turntable just listening to it over and over. And I think my, my love of film music in particular and obviously, you know, music to picture uh, really started at a pretty young age. So that was my earliest memory of really being moved, mm-hmm. um, you know, and having a real emotional response to film music. Um, mine, uh, my path came more through the, um, the bands and production. Um, I was in bands through high school and then in college. Um, and then after that, I, um, I got into, I wanted to be a studio guitarist and I asked someone like, well, how do you do that? And they said, well, you should probably just write your own songs and produce them. So um, I started down that that road, and um, uh, I didn't have a ton of success in like radio charts, but I had a lot of success in licensing music to to into films and on TV shows, and then that sort of parlayed into advertising, and um, very quickly it moved from sort of you know traditional band and and format to like well let me expand a little further add a little orchestra in this piece and then you know each project that came along uh i would just get into really deeper hot water and be like oh gosh now i have to (laughs) i have to expand into this world and this world and um you know i met kav uh kave a long time ago and he had a very clear uh sort of uh I, i guess goal in in his his line of sight to uh, be a, a film composer. And so that rubbed off a little bit. And I had other friends that, that were um, sort of looking in that direction too. So, um, you know, all of that, I, I was lucky to be around a lot of talented people and uh, right. kind of uh, hop on that train. So, I mean, as composing partners, you guys clearly are bringing different uh, backgrounds to, uh, to this partnership. Um, do you guys kind of, uh, is that kind of how you approach projects? Do you, focus more on your strengths as individuals or do you kind of try to uh, complement each other's strengths with each? I mean, how, how does that kind of, uh, I guess the collaborative process between you two work? Um, well, yeah, I think part of our, um, part of the, part of our strength has been, you know, having the, the, the two different backgrounds and over the years, I think we've both learned a great deal from each other. Um, and I think, uh, as Michael mentioned, I mean, I think we've really rubbed off on each other. So, 
um, we've picked up a lot of skills and sensibilities from each other. And so I think there's a lot of crossover now as far as what we can do. We just come at it a little differently because of our backgrounds. Um, as far as the scoring process goes, um, it's kind of interesting because we've worked together for so long. Uh, there's a, sort of a, a almost an intrinsic cohesion that happens uh -huh. even if we're not working on a piece together at the same time which is often the case we'll often just split scoring duties up uh -huh. um i mean if it's you know if it's like a main theme sometimes or you know maybe some critical piece or something we may be sitting in the same room but uh oftentimes uh you know scoring duties are split up between the pair of us but when we come back together to listen to what we've been up to uh, strangely, there's this, as I mentioned, this cohesion that, that's just intrinsically there now because I think we're very much in tune with each other's uh, aesthetic and production language and, and you know, we're, uh, we're on the same page as far as direction for the particular projects and so on and so forth. Right. Yeah, and I think um, most people can't, yeah, can't really tell the difference. Um, I, most of the time... Um, I could hear, you know, Kaveh's strong personality in his music and mine and mine. Um, but it, they, it really works out nicely um, in a project like Forza, for instance, that had a ton of music so that it keeps some variety while staying cohesive. Right, uh, right. On the whole project. So what happens when somebody disagrees? What is the procedure for compromise if, if one of you, or maybe what are your techniques for convincing the other to go your way? <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's pretty selfless and like there's so much trust because um, we've been at it for so long. Right, yeah. Um, I'm sure there was times, I can't even think of any where, you know, you'd leave frustrated or anything because at, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's just an idea and you could easily like explore the idea. And, you know, if both of us aren't excited about it. It's pretty safe to say, like, we should go back and try something else. You know, I think part of it, too, is there's um, there's a, a sensibility there um, that I think comes with experience. You know, we've both been doing this for a very, very long time. And I think we have a pretty good handle on at least what we consider uh, good or not so good. Right, right. And what what the other what I would consider, you know, what Michael might think is good or not good. So I have a pretty good gauge. Um, so if I'm working on something or if Michael's working on something and we begin to suspect that it's garbage, we don't get too far into it <laughs> before we go to the other room and be like, Hey man, I'm not sure about this. I'm pretty sure it's terrible, but why don't you come and confirm that it's terrible <laughs> and then we'll just toss it out. But generally, I mean, if there's a conversation, you know, it's, uh, it's, you know, we always try to come from the standpoint of making something better or, you know, if there is if, if there's a, a real issue, you know, to come from the perspective of salvaging what can be salvaged and just, uh, you know, take take what we have that's workable and, and keep and improve it from there. Right. I think if there's any any difference, the biggest is sort of our workflow. Um, I kind of work like a little bit like a Tasmanian devil that cartoon and like a kid opening Christmas presents and stuff's flying everywhere. Uh -huh. And Cobb is much more, it's very diligent, very deliberate. Um, so like there's times where like if the, there needed to be a sound, sound might be not be right, but I, I feel like, Oh, well I could get it there after the 30 steps. Right. Um, whereas Cobb uh, sometimes will be like, no, it's going to be right. We'll start with it. Correct. Before we sort of fix it later uh, but really the, there are small things that um really doesn't uh s slow us down all that much it's, it sounds like you guys are a pretty uh, efficient team and that's that's awesome <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're pretty in tune i mean we've, we've known each other for 20 years now and have been uh, working for more than half of that together so that's awesome uh, yeah no more surprises <laughs> at this point yeah <laughs> So yeah, I mean you've worked together on you know you, you talk about all the projects. I mean your most recent one is uh, being Forza Motorsport Six, um, and I mean racing games are you know they're a staple of uh, of the gaming uh, of the, as a gaming genre. You know I grew up with Gran Turismo and and uh, of course Forza now is kind of uh, the, the the go to franchise. Um, so 
as a racing game, I mean, if there's no narrative or story, or I mean, where do you start musically? I mean, what kind of score does a racing game need? I think that was part of the conversation here. You know, when we first got into dialogue with Microsoft, um, obviously this is a big tentpole title for them. Right. It's the sixth in the series. You know, it's got very stiff competition. The expectations are very high. Um, I think what was clear for them was that they didn't want to do what they had done before. Right. Um, and that's not necessarily a negative thing. It's just that, you know, they had done what they had done and they didn't want to do it again. So uh, they wanted to go through a discovery period with us. And I think we came into it with a pretty clear idea that we wanted to make it more than what a typical g racing game would usually uh, involve, which mm -hmm. is, you know, obviously there's a lot of soundtrack, like licensed songs and, and whatnot. Right. And just sort of like your typical high adrenaline music. And that's not to say that our score doesn't have the high adrenaline stuff, but we wanted to take a far more filmic, thematic approach to it. So one of the first tasks was to come up with a main theme. A Forza had never had a theme before. Um, and then, uh, you know, a variety of sub-themes and to give it a really strong, uh, you know, a, a musical and production aesthetic um, that had a lot of scope and, as I, as I mentioned, was very cinematic. Right. So those were our so our, our design cues for the score. Um, and uh, so we, we worked for about a month or so coming up with um, ideas, essentially, that we were that we were taking to Microsoft. And fortunately, they, they loved this new direction. They really I liked the idea of taking it somewhere not only new, but sort of elevating it thematically and, and sort of making it more filmic. Um, so that it really supports the visuals, despite the fact, as you mentioned, that you don't have characters in a story or whatnot. Right. Uh, but to give it an, a real musical identity. Which is, I think, what I mean, what you guys did, and I, I mean, I was listening to the to, al to the album, and you did build this kind of sonic world that you almost uh, get absorbed in, very much like a film score or or, or a narrative, and and that wasn't something that I was expecting, you know, going into it. So I think you guys definitely succeeded uh, in Thank that realm. Thanks. So, so when, when you first started on the project, I mean, you know, a lot of, I talked to composers and they say, okay, I looked at the story, I looked at the um, the character, the plot, and I pulled kind of, uh, the, that kind of spoke to me and kind of pushed my music in that direction. But with a racing game, uh, what were you latching onto to kind of inform the style or inform the tone for this kind of filmic uh, uh, soundscape? What, was it the cars? Those are the course designs? I mean, what was really kind of I informing the music here? I think the largest part of that was um, the, um, the emotion that happens from the player or in real life when, when a driver connects with the car. Mm -hmm. um, and we had these sort of buzzwords that would fly around and, and like desire and... Um, just that we were trying to capture that so there's there is a small journey that the player gets to take um from starting off when the from the opening scene scene in the home space mm -hmm. going on to where you travel to the track that you're you're going to race at um and then you get the pre-race and so we're trying to build from a very serene sense of desire as you're in these base levels, you know, modifying your car or um, painting your car or choosing your car and to a sense of like lifting out of that and then uh, sort of a hype and a heightened energy and, and uh, getting the adrenaline going. And then when you get into the race, it just takes off from there. Um, and then we try not to just beat you over the head with, like Kav said, just the high adrenaline music, but right. take your journey through your race um, and then coming out of that. So there's a little bit to... Um, to work with and um a lot of that was just keeping in mind the emotion that the player will have as they go through this kind of mini journey uh, for each race i mean that's that, that's cool that, that sounds like you're trying to get into the head of the player and like yeah that sounds that's awesome that's a great approach i really love that <laughs> well and they also um microsoft had also told us that uh, obviously that you know we're dealing with a large score there's a lot of music so we didn't want to stay necessarily within the same genre for the entire score right. so the the idea here was to create a core 
uh, thematically and aesthetically. And then we would push this, you know, uh, one section would be like, for example, a little bit more hybrid orchestra. Another section would be more sort of just focused orchestra. One section would be more electronic. Another would be a little bit more on the industrial side. Um, you know, maybe some ambient type music, but yet all of it had elements that were part of that very core aesthetic that we've been talking about. So even though we're pushing a little left and right of center, um, all of it sounds cohesive. It all sounds like it's part of one score. But, you know, I think if we didn't do that, it would have gotten pretty monotonous and we would have just had two, two and a half hours of repetitive music. Right. Yeah, that's, I mean, it is. It was a huge, huge soundtrack album, too. You guys released a lot. Did you guys release all of it, or was it... Uh... Oh, no, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. It, you know, some, of it, some of it was... The pieces were kind of too small, or they were sort of utility pieces. Um, and it's sad to let some of that go, because sometimes there's a really nice musical idea in there. Yeah. Um, but it just it would be difficult to put on a 50-track soundtrack with like 10 seconds here and... right yeah but i mean as a soundtrack itself it is it's a you get a you get a you know bang for your buck it's a lot of great music in there so thank you yeah it's it's still pretty dense nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> so uh i'd also love to talk about because you guys have a, a a company ninja tracks right yes and uh that's a, a great uh production music library that you guys started a company for uh film music and tele uh, television um so wh what was the key uh, to that success and making sure your music stood out from the rest of the music libraries out there? Uh, I think that the first and foremost, we really never approached it as a, a library or um, library music. Uh -huh. we, everything was uh, to try and just achieve the, the highest level of musicality that we can, the highest level of music production, and e even go as slow as we needed to go. Uh, we didn't need to have volumes and volumes like a lot of the music libraries do. And, right. Um, I think often the the music suffers as a, as a result of that. So we we always were just trying to um, really ha have a high standard, and um, we tried as much as we can to stick to our guns on that, and uh, still still do. That's it's awesome. I mean, you guys have been in a uh, it's been used in a, you know tons of great stuff, and so you know a lot of you know these advertising agents and trailer houses they come and they license your music. So so far, what's been some of your favorite things that your music has ended up being featured in? I think it changes every year. You know, it's when we first started, um, I think it was in the early 2000s. Um, we, we've we managed to get, you know, a placement basically in every major movie every year. Uh -huh. uh, come out. So I think every year there's, there's some new one or two big, you know, awesome, huge, uh, super cool looking, great sounding movie. Um, this year, I don't know. I'm trying to think what was recent that was super cool. Um, uh, well, like towards the end of last year, there was a a, a skating movie um, uh, that's called uh, "We Are Blood," and that was really cool because they took one of our pieces in its entirety and used it for their entire opening of the film. Wow! Um, and the the, sh the footage is amazing. It, it worked really well. So it's it's really kind of extra special when. Um, like an artist, someone that's making a film like that takes your music and then creates further art with it. Um, not to say that trailers aren't, aren't always art, but um, sometimes, sometimes they are. Yeah. So there's some great, I mean, I've especially, I mean, you go back to the, I mean, this, these days the trailers are, I feel like they're kind of moving trends, but I mean, there's, when they were edited, right. I think they are almost little mini short films in themselves. Or... Yeah. That's when they're at their best. They, they certainly are. Yeah. Um, but to, to, since we were talking about fours a little bit and to, to, to wrap up this fantastic discussion, uh, I'll ask the question, uh, if, if you could score any racing movie or action movie with a famous car chase, uh, with no insults or, you know, to the original composer or anything, w <laughs> which would it be? Huh? Um, that's a hard question. <laughs> I, I have to think for a second there. There's because there's some, I mean, obviously there's there's a lot of movies with really iconic car chases in them, right? Okay. Yeah, go for it. I'm gonna go with Ronin. Oh, that's an awesome. I was about one. to say Ronin. That was but awesome. I don't know uh, if I could beat like what Elliot, Elliot did a great did. job. Yeah, it yeah. was so cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it was it was simple and understated, uh, you know. But it was man, 
I just I can visualize it and I can hear it in my head every time I close my eyes and think of that movie. The car chase is what jumps out. Yeah, like uh, I think uh, Gone in sixty seconds would be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, yeah. The uh-huh. the, the original or the the Nicolas Cage one. Uh, I don't think I've seen the original. I've only seen the Nick Cage one. Okay, yeah, which... there there is an original. I don't. I've never seen it either, but uh, I think there is a. It was a, a an adaptation of the original. I believe oh, so. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I've yeah. checked. Check- but yeah, something like that. But I'm going to go with Mike. I think uh, Ronan was also the first movie that came to my mind. Well, that's uh, makes sense that you guys are working together then. So. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Share our> opinions. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, guys, thank you uh, so much for your time uh, this evening. It's been such a great uh, time chatting with you, and, and uh, congratulations on the score. It's a it, it really is a it does stand out from the rest of the pack, and, and provides that genre I think with a, a nice needed boost of energy. So thanks. Thank you so much, and thank you for having us on. It's been uh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks, Kaya.